Hello, hey, and welcome to the 4th of July-ish? No, because 4th of July is on Sunday, so next episode is the 4th of July. Um, Welcome to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing accompanied by David Rush Vibes Rushing, and we are here to rush our vibe with you. Indeed. Indeed. So, what's going on? I I don't know. My body is uh, failing me. Uh, I spent last week with a... I, I initially thought it was food poisoning, come to find out that I may have been exposed to a stomach flu virus um, and I I thought I was on the come up and you know what I actually jinxed myself because earlier today I said oh I haven't had any issues any incidents I'm, I guess I'm in the clear the lie detector determined that was a lie so so you've been boo-booing I've I've had I've been having instances. Not the BGs. Um, and it's been rough. And I then I called my doctor and spoke to a triage nurse, and she you was spoke like, "Spoke to your doctor?" No, I spoke to a triage nurse on oh. the phone. Um, two of them actually. And the first one was kind of like, "Yeah, Yo, you got a stomach bug. Just you'll be fine in a couple of days." And the second one actually like had great bedside manner. Like she just genuinely cared. She was sweet. Um she listened to me even though I'm sure everything I was saying just confirmed what the previous nurse had said, but I just needed someone to just appease me. So, they all said it would last like 4 days. I feel like whatever it was, I contracted Monday. It is next Tuesday. And I'm still struggling. I've been going through Tums. Um, I've been drinking carbonated stuff. Like, ugh. So that's that's how my vibe is rushing. It's it's fun. So we're um, coming off the heels of episode 31, where we discussed um, Juneteenth. That was just made a federal holiday. We talked about that. We delve or dove into some some other topics uh, about school systems and what they're teaching kids and how they're and, failing and what they're not teaching kids. And um, I think you know I want to take a break from heavy. Well, no, I'm kind of lying, so I don't want to. I'll, I'll retract that. I even want to take a break from. Pressing uh, matters American. related. <laughs> well, he wants uh, to step issues. away from black issues. No, I want to step away from black issues because I am, All right, I am Uncle Tom. I am black, therefore those issues are step persistent. Step on. Go ahead. Um, but I mentioned kids. So it's interesting because we have two kids. One is five, one is one. And when I think about when I was growing up, uh, my kids, our kids are being raised in a completely different way because due to the nature of the, the pandemic. And when our youngest sovereign was born, obviously when you were pregnant, we didn't know that the pandemic was coming, that you know a virus was going to be let out of a lab or someone was going to eat a bat. And we always talk about how fortunate we were or how, how thankful we were that I was actually able to be in the delivery room when Sovereign was born. So it was like COVID is coming, but it was, it was before like a lot of the, a lot of the shutdowns or a lot of the restrictions went into place, hospital restrictions went into place. So I was able to be there and it was, it was awesome. And thinking about a world where you just, you just have to be so worried about everything like masks and if other people have had, have a mask and, you know, are we going to be able to to find a cure for this this new virus? It really made me second guess. Like, like do we want to do this again? Like, what like what is the world going to be like? Do we want to have another kid? And um, for a while, I was like, I think we should just have two because I mean, obviously for other reasons. Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't like our kids like a quarter of the time. <laughs> so it's like, wait, are we doing what I think we're doing? Yeah. 
Oh. That's what we're supposed to. That's what I we said we were going to do. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, all that to say, they say when you, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. And um, I think that uh, he was um, rolling on the floor, laughing his, <laughs> laughing his butt off. His holy. His holy, his, his holy butt his off. His holy of holies. Because, um, no, I'll let you, I'll let you say it. Um, I, I, I'm so unprepared. For some reason, I thought we were doing this next episode. I didn't realize we were doing this, this episode. Um, so jokes on us, specifically me, because I spent a lot of time referring to Savi online as our last born. Um, but it turns out if you, um, if you, oh, this is a, we're doing a horrible job. Of, we are. If oh, you, just introducing if, this. Um, it turns out we are. Team three. Oh, I was going to say, I thought you were going to say we are pregnant. I was like, no, you are pregnant. I'm <laughs> pregnant and I'm, I'm suffering yeah. a lot. So Rush Vibes is growing. The, the in-studio vibe tribe is growing. It's done. This it's, is, it's hit. Not, it's, I can't do it's, this again. Yeah. It's, it's at its peak. So yeah, we, we are, are expecting little Rushed Viber number three, who will be known by by the acronym LBL, last but not least. Um, and we are going to make efforts to ensure. We should just name, we should just name the baby LBL. <laughs> LBL. Why are you LBL? Because my parents wanted to reiterate that I am the last born. Uh, we are expecting said baby in November. Scorpio so season, another baby. Another Scorpio. Scorpio We've got season. Solace, November 13th. David, November 17th. And this baby... So due date got moved to November 15th. Um, we're notorious for going early. So I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that this baby shows up like October 29th. Uh, <laughs> just just because November is busy enough as it is. We go from our anniversary in October to Solace's birthday, which I always turn into an extravaganza, to David's birthday, who usually just gets the scraps of solace's birthday because he's always like i don't matter then we have thanksgiving and then we roll into december and it's just it's christmas it's new year it's i think my mom's birthday your parents anniversary and it's just ond is a very busy season for us and i'm already exhausted but it has taken some time to gain excitement um because i if you know me i'm very i'm anti being pregnant i'm honestly anti having kids <laughs> i like i know all these newlywed couples and i'm quick to tell them like practice but you don't need to perfect like just just don't rush don't rush into it um and it, it took me a long time to get to this place each and every one of my pregnancies i I'm typically very unhappy, um, mentally, physically, emotionally, but I'm trying to have a new perspective with this one, trying to be more optimistic. Um, the girls know Solace hasn't quite processed that she's going to be the big sister of two. So she was excited that Savi gets to be a big sister. Uh, so we allowed her to tell Savi. Savi didn't care. Um, Savi was like, yeah, whatever. She was like, you can get me out of this crib now. Uh, but I did record it. And she, you know, ran into her room. And she said, you're going to be a big sister. Um, so Solace is excited. She's warmed up to the idea of potentially having a brother. I guess I, I told her all of my um, hardships with my little brother. So she. She said she didn't want a little brother. Uh, she's always like, I don't want a little brother because of Uncle Jeremy. <laughs> well, it's not, it's not, let's not go down this road again. <laughs> um, let's not do it. But she, 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 she claims that it's a girl. She thinks it's a girl. Um, see, if I was ready, I was going to bring the envelope. Uh, I had my second trimester ultrasound. So we have gender. It's in an envelope. We, we just don't looked. know. We just don't know what it is. I don't want to look. Um, 
two people in this world, three people in this world know. It's not even on my medical file. It just says. Who knows? Mom, dad, and who? I don't know if dad knows. I don't know if she told dad. Mom, Georgia, and the, oh, that's right, the Georgia. ultrasound tech. Georgia. And Savi. <laughs> oh, yeah, because Savi was in the Savi room. Savi was there. Um, but, yeah, it's in an envelope. There's a small part of me that just wants to go till birth without finding out, but I don't think David will allow it's it. It's chaos. Um. But yeah, so we are, we're having a third. <sighs> I just never, I never pictured myself as the type to have three kids. Um, but. Here we are. Here we are. We're in it. We're in the process. Hence why I still have stomach virus from last Monday to next Tuesday. Because my immune system is. <laughs> Is shot because I'm growing a human being. So um, that's our rushed vibes news, rushed expansion. Um, but I'm done. I have been petitioning for someone to ensure that we uh, can avoid this situation again. Um, but yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, please. But, uh, but yeah, we... We're gonna have we're gonna be a family with three kids. So uh, if you have any large, mid-sized SUV suggestions, please um, pass them our way and let us know why. Um, but we are also using this as our announcement. So we're not really going to publicly announce it. So this is kind of how we know who listens to the podcast and who doesn't. Because if you don't listen to the podcast, you won't know that uh, we're pregnant. So baby rushing number three is coming. I personally think it's a girl. I think David thinks it's a girl. Uh, I won't lie. I had a dream the other night and that we found out it was a boy, and I was just really disappointed in the dream. Like I was very upset, uh, which is slightly concerning to me. But at the end of the day, we just want a healthy child to add to our team. Um, and that's it. Yeah, so um, a funny story about... This baby, uh, Jessica didn't tell me that she was pregnant. I never do. See, it's it's really important. No, it's Salas I told you. Sure, I'm talking about this baby. Um, it's really important as uh, the other person in any relationship to know your partner. So Jessica swears up and down that I don't be listening to her. I don't know her. He I don't pay. Att- I don't pay attention to her. He he be missing some. I be I so, be throwing some signals, and he just straight. So she had been acting real, real funny for a few days. This was gosh. When did I, when did I ask you? It was I was like, only five weeks pregnant. Yeah. So like I had just found out the week before, and she was just acting like real weird. Like she was just just. I want to say down, but she was not, she was not up. (laughs) (laughs) So I was just thinking like, why would, like, I know I I knew I didn't do anything. Like it was like, she was a different kind of off. It wasn't like off that, oh, you've done something and I'm waiting on you to figure it out so that I can yell at you again because I've already yelled at you in my head. It wasn't that kind of off. (laughs) It was more like, uh, like damn kind of off because I mean, let's be honest. A sovereign was born in January of 2020. So these two kids, sovereign and her, her younger sibling, will literally be probably I think they're gonna be Irish twins. Pandemic pandemic babies. One born at the beginning of it, one born at the hopefully the, the end of it. So I was like when she went to bed one night and she was just kinda like she had her head in the stairs as she was walking up, going to bed. And so I just asked her the next morning, I was like, Are you pregnant? And it was so funny because there was like a split second where she was like, oh, shoot, he knows. But she like contemplated not telling me the truth. She was like. But she 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 owned up to it. She was like, yeah. I was like, well, what was you going to tell me? Like, you just weren't going to like, you were just going to get let me think that you were just. <laughs> OK, so here's you the get, deal. Like yo. you were getting pudgy. Um, so I was going to wait until because I had. I I find out pretty no, she, early. She's changing her story. I find out pretty early that I'm pregnant. I think with Solace, it was three weeks. With Savi, Savi, I suspected, 
but I didn't get it confirmed until I think I was about maybe about five or six weeks. Um, so this baby, I, I suspected cause I was going somewhere and I went to pump and I had like no milk and I've been, call me a California cow. I've been, I've been pumping out milk for Savi. So I was kind of like, Hmm, this is odd. And California cow. You've never seen the happy cow commercials. No, I don't watch TV. Okay. Um, you just don't pay attention. I watch ad free streaming services. Anyway, so, bringing up old stuff. so I found out, but I wanted to have my first ultrasound and just make sure. So I made the appointment and I was just going to push through, but I was really just like, dang, how did I allow this to happen? How did I get myself in this predicament? How did I allow myself to get pregnant? Cause again, I'm not, I'm not the type so of woman. When a man and a woman. <laughs> when a man doesn't get the vasectomy, when, a man, when, a, man, was gonna when get, a man and a woman, while woman was pregnant have, with second have, child, have inter- that's how third child have, shows up. Have intercourse. And if you circle Sometimes. back to what furlough vibes episode, um, I did the math and the month that you were furloughed is the month that we conceived. So, don't be don't be sympathizing. It's all, a, all, a, all a part of God's plan. Don't be sympathizing apparently. for your furloughed spouse, okay? Because then you end up in situations like this. All a part of what the um, Lord had planned. So at the time, I found out you were still furloughed. So I was like, I'm not about to tell this man who is furloughed. Like, hey, hey, um, here's peep this. You know, I have another mouth to feed. Uh, I just I I. Didn't I'm always concerned about other people's stress levels, especially his, and he was very sensitive during his that furlough season, understandably. So I didn't want to add to that. I had been trying to find a job. I had really been in this place, you know, pre pandemic. I thought as soon as I turned thirty, you know, I've got my degree, I've had this baby, I'm gonna, you know, start pursuing a career. I've had a lot we've talked about it several times not in grave detail but enough for people to understand that you know i'm still struggling to get that like dream career job so there was that um so i was really kind of beating myself up like wow i felt irresponsible i felt like people would judge me uh i'd been in a couple conversations with people and you know people don't realize that their words can sometimes sting so someone had said oh you guys think about having one more and um I think a few times we were like, no, we're good with the two. And people were like, yeah, because three is a lot. And so it's like, one, why are you asking if we're going to have one more if you're just going to say three is a lot? So I then got it in my mind. I'm like, okay, well, now I was just so stressed about all the ways my life is now inconvenience. Like, you know, Solace is in kindergarten. Savi's at the age where, you know, we can start talking about her doing daycare. And it was like, yes, we're finally at a good place where I can start to pursue something for me. And so I was very unhappy um, when I found out I was pregnant. Uh, and it was it was so odd. Like, there was no, is it a false pot? Like, no, chick, you're pregnant. Um, so when he asked me about it, it wasn't that I was going to lie. One, I wanted to confirm everything was good because, I mean, I live with you. How am I, go- was, how am I going lie. to lie to you about being pregnant? Um, but two, I had said I wasn't going to tell you uh, if you if you suspected. I wasn't going to tell you until the appointment. So if you asked, then I, I'm not going to lie, but I'm not going to you know be forthcoming with the information. So I guess he figured it out. And he asked. You guess? No, I figured it out. And he asked. And I was like, one, like he just says, sometimes he doesn't even like his own kids. So I was like, man. And I think like maybe right around that week that I found out, he was like, I'm so tired of these kids. (laughs) So it's like, man, I've got all all these things stacked against me. How am I going to go turn and tell him that I'm pregnant? Um, I I didn't want to know I was pregnant. Like all I've ever prayed for is to be one of those women who like, just don't find out they're pregnant until they're like six months in. And then it's like, Oh, three months to go. Um, but that's just, that's just how it worked out. Uh, I think I, the way the cookie crumbles. Yeah. I had, I was able to hide it from him with Savi because he traveled for work. So I didn't tell him till I was almost out of my first trimester. I think I was like two weeks shy of my first trimester being concluded before, um, we told him, uh, Solace knew, but like, didn't know at the same time. Um, so I don't know. I think I thought if I didn't tell him, I didn't have to admit it, 
but you know uh seeking just wise counsel and doing a lot of reflecting and then also being like yo this is it's too late to do anything about it we in here we we're we're in we're in here um I'm just glad because now we can stop like I guess, trying to hide it. I wasn't ever trying to hide it. Yeah, we were. Well, we, we were trying to hide it. I, I was I trying mean, to hide it. It's just I fortunate was. that the table is high enough that yeah. you can't tell. But like, even if I sat like this, I feel like you can't. You can't really tell. Um. So yeah, we are 20 weeks in. So we're at the halfway mark. If I had normal pregnancies and went till 40 weeks, but um, I'm tired. I'm uncomfortable. I'm miserable. Um, Savi doesn't care that I'm I'm pregnant. She's she very well. I feel like she's aware of it, and she's tormenting me all the more. Break, because she's of breaking it. you in. She is hazing me. But this is it. This is it. Like, and I'm gonna. I'm not pulling like a share. You know, retire, come back. I'm pulling a Jay Z. Like, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I can't do no more. So you're like Mace? No, because Mace opened up a ministry. Didn't and, then, and then Mace came back. I yeah. was hoping you said, "Yeah, I'm like Mace." I'm like, you know, Mace came back, right? Yeah. See, don't be, yeah. don't, don't sleep on me. Damn. Sleep with me, not on me. Um, oh, I'm definitely sleeping with me. <laughs> so yeah. Um, so you Rush Vibe Tribe, you guys are soon to be another Rush Vibe auntie and uncle. Um, we're, I think we're right now the plan is to do a gender reveal baby shower. So because pe- we're going to have whoever volunteers to send out the to help with the baby shower, uh, we'll probably send out the invitations. And then several days before the actual baby shower, they will reveal the gender to the attendees. We, the four of us, will not know. So upon arrival to wherever the baby shower is... Instead of like a surprise party where you'd yell surprise, you'd yell it's a, and then we find out. I'm glad this is all already mapped out that way. I don't have to do anything but show up and open presents. It's so awesome. You have to help me find a volunteer oh, yeah. um, and a DJ. Um, this is going to be a party. This is last but not. It's it's uh, the theme. We're still we're still in the pandemic. The theme of the baby shower is last but not least. We are still in the pandemic. Um. So yeah, that's what I want to do because I don't want to do these dangerous gender reveals where you know houses blow up, forest fire starts, and all that good stuff. But uh, I figured it'd be fun to do something different. I spent my pregnancy with Savi very upset, so I didn't really look at it from a celebratory perspective. And, and we didn't have a baby shower for Savi because. because Savi showed up three weeks early the day before her baby shower. Some of y'all still have gifts because the baby shower was going to be on Saturday and she was born on Friday. So you guys can still. Or they were going to get the gift Saturday morning. Don't re-gift. Don't re-gift. <laughs> don't Already. Bring the gift that no. you had for Savi. Yeah, those gifts are good. long then gone. bring the gift for the new baby. Those gifts are long um, gone. But Savi did get the short end of the stick. You know, didn't really get to have, you know, a first birthday party. Didn't have a baby shower. Um, so I feel like I'm going to be spending a lot of my life trying to compensate for what she missed out on. But, um, yeah, we're. I want us to go hard this time, you know have some music playing, some decent food and really celebrate um because i would hate as uncomfortable and as much as i don't like pregnancy i would hate to look back in a few years and be like man i really i really wish i had been more receptive to it appreciated it more um and embraced it more so i'm trying to go in that mindset but y'all know me i'm still gonna complain um I, I've told this baby how much more weight it can gain um, because. What are you doing? That's you, isn't it? Aren't you? Oh, I thought you were looking at my butt. Um, I've I've declared to this baby how much weight it can gain. Uh, stop! Because <laughs> um, I don't do big babies. So, so yeah, that's it. I feel like I'll keep rambling on, but you know, Rush by Vibes has a new addition. So. I said we're growing, baby. Yeah. We are growing. So on top of the other merch, we're going to have to get a Rushed Vibes onesie. So with that in mind, um, I don't know what... See, because we're we're obviously going to take a break soon because we don't want to be recording while Jessica's (laughs) 
pre sleeping. pre labor and then in labor and then you know we sleeping. want her to recover. So we'll we'll take a break here. At Rush vibes probably come holiday season um, when you know people probably won't be listening or watching podcasts anyway because they'll be too busy. Um, and you're starting to see a little bit of that now uh, with with the economy reopening up, people starting to you know go back to work or get out more and they're not in, in home as much, which is great. I encourage it, even if that means our, you know, we don't grow at all or as much. You know, I, I, I encourage everybody to get outside mm-hmm. as much as you can and do so safely because obviously that Delta variant is real. Can we stop naming but, um, this virus after no, businesses? No. Between uh, Corona and Delta. So, um, what was it was it saying? Yeah, so we'll take a break, but um, you know, and then we'll we'll come back for season two. But I don't know what Rush Five is going to look like for season two with three kids, two of which are under the age of four. So I don't know how we're going to manage. Two of which will be under the age of two. Two will be under the age of two. I don't know how we're going to. Zombie will still be one when this. I don't know how we're going to record. I don't know like what our schedule will be like. That is going to be probably the greatest challenge of our marriage is figuring out what Rush Vibes looks like. With three kids in the fold, so I think we can do it. I think oh, we, we can definitely we can do it. We're gonna be tired, Let's but see. we need to start generating revenue so we can hire a nanny. <laughs> hire a nanny. So y'all. All right. So we'll uh, we'll take a break and then we will come right back. All right, we back and we back and we back. In case uh, you skip through. No, don't the tell first me. the first section. Go back and listen to the first. Yo, section. would you let me do the bit? Jeez, Louise. Not Louise. Jeez, Jessica. <laughs> uh, if you skip the first part, the first section, because we do chapters now, go back to the first and listen. Oh, I thought you were gonna tell them. No, man. See, I don't know. I know, I know you did because you don't trust me. Supposed to be your partner in time. If I, you, if me trusting you is why I keep getting into the same situation over and over again, you're irresponsible. So you know we that? are. Um, you're irresponsible. What are you? What are you drinking, by the way? Now that, now that now that the world knows that you're, I'm drinking bubbly. <laughs> compromised. You can't. Uh, I'm drinking uh, bourbon. Well, I don't know if you are really analytical, because I'm sure. Because when I when I'm pregnant, I I gain. In my shoulders and my my upper body gets gets fuller. Hush. Um, so even though I've tried to improve my posture, uh, but I would pour drinks, but I wouldn't actually drink them. So if you go back and look on wasting our the episodes, wasting our you'll see that I'll have a glass in front of me. Wasting our supply episode. Wasting but if supply. you watch, I don't pick it up at any point during the episode. But I was drinking this because my stomach was hurting. Um, and I was hoping that something carbonated mm. was gonna. Yeah. You know how ginger ale is medicine. Yeah. So, <laughs> yes, room temp, <laughs> room temp ginger ale, though. which not has no stuff. actual ginger flavor. With, with not if the cold. If you read stuff. the back, oh, yeah. it's artificial. None of it is real ginger. And it don't matter. It don't matter. It's, it's not medicine. It's it's, it's the re- it's the remedy. Okay, tell your grandma pharmacist. <laughs> it's not medicine. It's, it works. Oh. Well, we could get some of that ginger ale out the closet. <laughs> or out the garage. Better yet, get it out the garage in the middle oh, of summer. Oh, not garage ginger ale. Steaming hot. Mm. Like, it's not, like it's not bad enough. You're already drinking it's something boiling. ginger ginger flavor, but now you got just Yo, 180 degrees. Room temperature degree. and garage ginger ale. All right. Hey, the room temp ginger ale be Room temperature hitting. is fire, yeah. but garage. like I, No, the garage is literally fire. Garage <laughs> So uh, this this will probably be our uh, our shortest episode of Rush Vibes. I don't think we'll go too long, um, but I, I did want to, um, on top of the news, which if you haven't watched the first chapter, go ahead and watch it. But if not, we'll probably give away what we talked about. But uh, so much in this country, you hear about uh, uh, women of color, specifically black women, and the trauma they experience during childbirth, especially. Um, you know, there's there's a very high rate of, of death uh, among black women when, when giving birth. And um, in, in terms of the overall just healthcare system, uh, how black women's uh, concerns over their bodies and the things that they're experiencing are com- are often like dismissed by by the system. So I wanted to give you uh, an opportunity just to kind of uh, for anyone who 
you know, maybe had 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 a, a pandemic birth um, and maybe experienced some things um, and maybe didn't know if you were like crazy for feeling that way or, or, or whatever. Um, I think because I, I, I was there, at least for the delivery, um, but I, I, I'm not I can't be inside your head. I, I can't I can't understand like all the emotions and feelings that you're having. So just want to kind of give you an opportunity just to kind of speak on what that first um, what what the what the the pregnancy was like with sovereign um, or excuse me, not the pregnancy, but, you know, knowing that you're giving birth during like an uncertain time and then like leaving the hospital, going into a world that was literally like shutting down. Um, what was the first? Because, you know, then and then on top of that, you have postpartum, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so what was that like for you? And, and what were some things that you did to kind of get get through it? Well, fortunately for us, when we had sovereign, I believe the pandemic was still referred to as the China flu. So I think at this point it was still on it. it it had just hit cruise ships. So, and that period was such a, a, like, I don't know that I'm remembering accurately. I can't remember if that's when there was one case in Washington state. Um, I can't remember if that was early February or late January, but it was in that window. So when we went in, honestly, the pandemic was really, it, was, the, it the, wasn't a pandemic yet. It wasn't, it yeah. was just a, a, a flu. Um, and the, one thing I was focused on was the fact that it was fl- regular flu season and the hospital had made it clear they weren't going to allow solace to come and visit. So I was really upset with that because I wanted her to meet her sister in the hospital. Um, so I wasn't thinking about, you know, coronavirus or anything. Uh, it was, and you know, the weekend that we had Savi, we had her on a Friday. And unfortunately, that Sunday, um, Kobe Bryant died. So it was just like, it was a weird time. Um, I remember I had... You didn't have to mention that. I mean, I did. Um, it, it was it was literally two days two later. Days, two days later. Um, yeah. Like, I am struggling. I'm like, postpartum hit real hard. But, you know, I was, I was zoned in. Like, I... When you're giving birth, like what you're dealing with, there's really no room to be <laughs> to be thinking about any other issues. Like I, I don't know that there are like if a woman peak pandemic was, you know, giving birth and was just like, Do you have a mask on? Like I feel like she was just like, get this thing out of me. Um, this pain is excruciating. And I, I'm certain I have PTSD from Savi's birth. Um so I wasn't thinking about that. Fortunately, we had like probably about two or three weeks before, you know, talks of the pandemic became serious. You know, people were um, starting to like, huh, should I be more concerned? What are we supposed it's to do? The, it's the famous line. Um, everyone who was working at that time, like we thought we were just going home for two weeks. <laughs> working well, we from weren't home for even two there weeks. yet because, oh. because we, this is still February. So this was oh, right yeah, around yeah. the time that I suspect that we had already had it because Solace got really sick. Um, and Solace is one of those, she gets sick and then she's like, she's sick for it. Like you don't Solace. even get to enjoy her being I thought sick. Solace was, Solace was out for a good t- two weeks. Like there was no, like usually she gets a fever and it's typically around her birthday every year. Um, she usually has like a cold, gets a fever for a day. And then she's, you know, she'll have like a stuffy runny nose for a couple of days or maybe a week. But for the most part, she's back to being soft. Yeah. No, she got sick. I believe Savi got sick. She had a, she was sneezing um, and had a runny nose and she was like two or three weeks old. Um, I got sick, but I think I was too focused on everybody else being sick to really sit in my sickness. And I feel like at the tail end of it, you got sick. So yeah, I was, um, I was dealing with some fluish. Uh, it was weird. It was like, it was a flu. It wasn't a cold. I mean, it wasn't a cold. Uh, but it was, it wasn't quite cause I've had the flu before. So when I had the flu, it was like no energy, the chills. Um, I, I didn't have like, um, I wasn't vomiting or I didn't have like excessive bathroom use. It was just like, just the chills and the fatigue. Um, and, and I actually had an appetite when I had the flu. It was so weird. Like I just, I was craving barbecue bacon cheeseburgers. So I asked Jessica to order to make me one and then order, and then order pizza chicken. and then fried chicken. 
So it was the flu was fantastic for me. Like it was incredible. And like, we got high off of. <laughs> and I accidentally almost overdosed on uh, hydrocodone. Hydrocodone. So that's a story for another day. I feel like we've told this story. Oh, maybe maybe we have. We can I don't tell know. it again. But basically, the day I realized I was sick. This is this is a story that we're not talking about. Um, the 2020 we're talking about a couple years ago. Uh, when I realized I was sick, this is actually before Silas was born. So this was like 20, 2014, probably, mm-hmm. or early, early 2015. And I, I, I had been working the night before, um, and the job I had, we worked, um, we were in, we installed equipment in people's homes. So I was, I was working on a job with another coworker and I was fine at the beginning of the installation, but at the end, I just felt my energy it just dropped like, like a rock. So I said, Hey man, I, I got to get out of here. Luckily, it was right down the road from the house. I came home with the bed. Woke up the next day. I think I got on a couple conference calls, but I was like, yo, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not feeling it. So I called out. So I told Jess, like, what I was feeling, like, how I was feeling and my symptoms. And she was like, oh, go take, basically, whatever she told me to take was, was like ibuprofen. I told him to take acetaminophen. Acetaminophen. But I had a prescription of. So I went downstairs. I Man, I'm a guy. I don't read. No, it was in the upstairs bathroom. Or upstairs bathroom. I don't read labels. I mean, I read labels, but only so far, right? Like she said, take acetaminophen or hydrocodone acetaminophen. No, I just said acetaminophen. Oh, because hydrocodone isn't. <laughs> oh, well, acetaminophen was somewhere in the. Yeah, so hydrocodone is acetaminophen. Sure, but it so, says hydrocodone acetaminophen. Yeah, I so I guess the, I think the bottle was turned. I think is what happened. So I just saw. I didn't see the hyphen. I just saw the acetaminophen. So I was like, cool. And me, you know, whatever they say recommended, I always take one more. So. I think I, took, I actually told you to take two. Oh, well, I'm glad we're, we were in sync. So I took two. In sync? You left. <laughs> felt, gr- felt great. Like, I went to sleep. It was, I was, it was so peaceful. It was I so peaceful. I came home from work. It was fantastic. And this like, is I, when we I, used I, I'm, our I'm loft. not recommending drug abuse. I don't think he could handle it now. I am not recommending. I am not, I am not supporting it. I am not saying to engage in anything other than what writes on the back of these these oh. these bottles however my personal experience yeah, he was high <laughs> like the flu is like one of the best things that ever happened to me i got great sleep i had an amazing appetite and i didn't have to go to work so I it was a great it was on a great that week. couch and i was like uh i think i called his name like 10 times yeah and he did not respond oh, he I was, was like o-u-t he was out i was like i was like oh hey what are you doing here and then she saw the red, I think she saw the red bottle. She was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but I'm, I'm still here today. So he obviously, is. obviously. And he had I, taken it hours before. So I figured by then it was out yeah, of his system. I'm fine. Anyway. Uh, but yeah. So when I, when I fast forward to 2020, when, um, so I had had the flu before, before the, the hydrocodone. And so I, I knew what, what I should have felt like, but I was able to still get up and go to work and whatever. So maybe if we did have it, I probably spread it. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, but I remember thinking to myself, like, man, this is this is different. Like, I haven't ever had an an ailment or an illness like this before. It was, it was just off. But I didn't even put two and two together um, well, because I think at, at that time they had, they had been talking about it. And I remember we were out at dinner and there was like a blurb on the TV on the news. And I remember Jessica asking me, like, "Are you worried about the coronavirus?" And I was like, "I mean, not really." And then it was almost like after that, everything like just started happening at like rapid pace. Yes. Like the first case was reported in the United States and then some, some companies were like, okay, let's. I'm not even going to front. I thought this was a white people disease because only white people were being reported having it. And then I was like, dang, I was like reparations. We finally, <laughs> finally, our melanin is protecting us from whatever this virus is and then idris was like the first celebrity to get it and i was like dang you like you just there were a lot of people who actually believed like it was like well yeah they thought black people were were, (laughs) yeah like it was it was attacking white people and then we found out that black people were you know fast forward now we're 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 hit attacked by it was the demographic hit hit the hardest you know what i do um, remember we had gone to, because we had gotten a new Harris Teeter, um, 2019, and we were sitting at, it has a bar, so you can get beer and wine, and we were sitting at the bar, and there were these two white guys, maybe like two or three um, stools down from us, and I just so happened to hear their conversation, and one of them was talking, I mean, I just in hindsight, it's crazy, he was like, you know, you know, they say this thing's serious, but if it gets me, it gets to my time, it's my time, and like, 
it's cr- like looking back on it and thinking like someone had this perspective. I, I hope he was preserved, but spared preserved. Okay. Cause you can die and, and your body still be preserved <laughs> and then so. brought back and then he could come back. I, that's what you should say spared. Um, but it was just so interesting preserved. how nonchalant I liked preserve. How nonchalant well, it's everybody easy. was about. Well, it. it's easy to say that before shit gets real, and then it shit got very yeah. real. But I mean, there there were um, a, a large group. There, were, I mean, there were, there were a lot of people who were like, you know, this is kind of fishy, and you know, the government, everything the government's telling us doesn't really sound right, mm-hmm. and, and you know, I'm switching. gonna I'm gonna still live my life, and you know, I mean, we have friends friends of ours like never really. I mean, they they followed like mask mandates or whatever, but you know. If they were outside, you may not have seen them. If it wasn't mandated, you may not have seen them with the mask. And but they were still how long we still living their lives. And where they told us, yeah, I mean, we not were to wear masks because that would have us touching our face. Oh yeah, yeah. it was. It's, it's so interesting. Like it'll be a great uh, documentary, and then like five Yo. in like five ten years, twenty twenty um, COVID nineteen. It was documentary is going to be fire. It's so funny. Somebody said like uh, millennials. Or like our great uh, like life event was supposed to be the recession of 2008, and that then we got the the pandemic. We didn't uh, get something of, else in there. Uh, we got the the. I mean, world. We got the disgrace twice impeached. No, uh, not, not, not <laughs> I mean, everybody has, has that, but uh, yeah, we had the the great recession. And well, then, we were the generation that like the youthful generation during his presidency. Yeah. So. Yeah, that was that, that was that was a crazy time. But yeah, I remember um it was like after we got home, it was like, yo, so like how do we we got this brand new baby, like can we take the baby out? Like are we like what do we do? But and I think that made it easier because usually with a new baby, the only place you're taking them is to the doctor. doctor's appointments. Yeah. Know, mom's supposed to be recovering, which doesn't really happen in America cuz you just kind of have to go back into life. Um, yeah, cuz we we are benefits are sh- I know they suck. Still don't have. I already said shit twice, or three times now, yeah. so I don't. I Still think I might don't be have my parental leave in this country. This is supposed to be the greatest country in the world. Um, yeah, I mean, no, it's not. I mean, um, can always. I mean, it it can be, but there they are developing can always nations get, that offer maternity. Leave. I mean, sure. I mean, let's not act like capitalism is, isn't a thing. So, uh, we could definitely send to be better with our our, our overall benefits for, for fortunately i'm i'm with a company now that is has very good benefits and, and cares for their uh their employees very well i've yet to have a company that my, <laughs> my well the company i worked for when i was pregnant was when i had solace yeah. they um they that shall not be named they they were good <laughs> and then shifted on me but um they did take care of me i was able to take 12 you know my uh one, one of my one of my my long-term goals Right, like really, really long-term goals, is to become so ridiculously wealthy mm-hmm. that I could buy that former company and then fire, like just dissolve it. <laughs> it would be so fantastic. Like I would call like an all hands on deck meeting <laughs> and be like, "Yo, no need to fire. Y'all go home. No need to." But I would give everybody a severance. Um, except except, the except for the people who were there like. when when you were like oh yes I am very petty, He's very petty but I'm also very protective over my wife I and, won't lie I did have was, I did have a brief was, moment she was shafted where I unfair. wanted to wor- that's that's part of why I always want to be the client where I wanted to work for a big brand and then they would have been the agency and then I'd be like okay so I'm taking the business <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm pulling the business from you yeah. remember me. Um, but then I, uh, I had to change my heart posture. Yeah. So, uh, giving unlike my husband. So what do you think this would this, uh, next, this pregnancy or this, this post birth will be like, because, uh, assuming like, I don't see us shutting back down, um, vaccines are readily available and they're, they're becoming, um, you know, I think the, 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 the preteen to teenage was just approved for, for one of the vaccines pretty, uh, pretty recently. So, I don't see it shutting back down unless this super Delta variant or whatever is like Thanos and not the wipe out half of us. So, you know, so confession time, I won't Ooh, lie confession time. after this is my confession. After Savi was born, I actually didn't mind shutdown. 
Oh, shutdown was cool for the two weeks that we all thought we were going to be home. Well, I, I didn't mind it more so because I, like, I didn't feel obligated. Months, six months? Yo, I'm talking. I'm sorry. I didn't, because the thing is, and I think that's what also ultimately affects, you know, postpartum. You, you're pregnant, and while you're pregnant, everyone's concerned about you and your well-being. Because for the most part, the baby's the baby's going to be fine. Um, so how are you? How are you feeling? Like, you, you get so much concern about you. Even at the doctor's appointments, everything is about you, the mother. And then you have this baby, and everyone's like, oh, my gosh, let me see the baby, the baby, the baby. And a few people are like, oh, how are you doing? Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping when the baby sleeps? All the, like, it's the same conversation over and over again. So, you know, I know I struggled with this with Solace, I, but I didn't have to struggle as much with Savi, where I didn't have to feel obligated to entertain people. Uh, you know, you just have a baby. I'm, I, I nurse typically when I have a baby. So at, I, I want to be comfortable in my home. I want to be able to pull my boob out, feed this baby, and put it away. I don't want to have to worry about, you know, covering up. Is this person uncomfortable with me nursing? Uh, I, I don't like all of that. And then I also don't like have feeling like I have to appease because people say, oh, I want to come visit you and the babe. Okay, they come over, and they, just, they really just want to hold the baby. Um, but I think in that postpartum phase, especially immediately after birth, the first six weeks, <clears throat> it'd be beneficial if you were like, Hey, I'm going to come over and clean. I'm going to come over and cook something for you. I'm, you know, I'm going to come over and let you take a nap. Like you, you know, put the baby down. If the baby wakes up, I'll take care of the baby for you. But less, but for the most part, everyone loves an itty bitty human being. Um, I'm still speaking an itty bitty human being. So they want to hold that person. And then, you know, the baby's uncomfortable because they're new to this world. They don't know this place. They and they want comforting, and then people are like, "Oh, I got you!" And it's like, just give me my baby back, because when a baby is crying and you are a nursing mom, it hurts your breast because it lets down milk, and now you're uncomfortable. But you don't know how to politely tell someone to give you your freaking baby back. So lockdown was beneficial for me in the sense that I didn't have to feel like I needed to be an entertainer, and you know. I like to have my house clean when people come over, but I just had a baby. I had a lot of pelvic floor issues, so mobility was not convenient for me before the baby was born and after the baby. It took months before I was able to like function um, to full capacity. So it's like I don't have the energy to have a clean house and have you come over. And yet people are like, oh, we don't care how the house looks like. You don't talk about me if my house is a mess because um, I'm going to talk about you if your house is a mess. So... Um, I did appreciate that aspect of lockdown, uh, but that window was probably right before my postpartum kicked in because I think my postpartum kicked in right around my birthday. So I definitely saw my my decline. So with this baby, I I I will say that I have pre traumatic stress where I'm anticipating getting to a place where I can't. I getting to that place again. And that's something that definitely um, concerns me. Yeah. And we'll have to, uh, we'll have to monitor that, monitor that and make sure that you are well taken care of. You have a good support system. A chef. People here to uh, clean and cook. Take, take the baby from you when, when the baby comes. And clean and cook. So uh, one thing uh, real quick, and I think we, we can wrap after this. Um, I, I did see uh, some nonsense on uh, a friend's Facebook post a few uh, few weeks ago, um, it was it was something about a doula and basically highlighting doulas and then saying and explaining why doulas were important. Um, and there were uh, there was at least one one man male and there were maybe maybe one other that was basically calling a doula like or saying oh you just want like a housekeeper or a nanny or something like that basically minimizing mm -hmm. the doula to somebody who only does like um, what you would equate to like the a, a housekeeper or the help. Um, so one thing I really want to say is I'm not here to trash anybody, although it's, it's a very, it was a very trash take, uh, because anything that you're speaking on, you may want to research it before you speak on it, at least just a little bit. So you have some sort of context, but, um, this isn't a dunk, dunk on anybody, but I will say men, um, especially men in heterosexual, heterosexual relationships. Um, when your, your, your partner is, is giving birth, um, and they, uh, the doula is, is up in the air, like the, 
you are trying to decide whether you want one or not. Research doulas and understand their purpose and how beneficial they can be for the for for your partner as well as you. Like we had a doula. Um, I wish we would have had one for for Salas. Um, our doula was awesome. She was she she just was a wealth of knowledge. Even though she was just starting out, she still knew way more than we did. And it had been it had been four years, obviously, since we had we had done childbirth so she was able to remind of us some things she was a calming presence she was here with jessica uh before we ended up going to the uh to the hospital because i was i was at work uh, i was dropping yeah. salas off at my at my parents house because we felt like the baby was coming um so doulas are, are, are way 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 more than just uh the help so if that's your interpretation please do some research talk to someone or a, 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 a husband or, or, or a man who was in a relationship when a doula was present and talked to the wife, just, just, just get informed uh, because doulas can be ex- extremely just invaluable. I, mm-hmm. I can't put like a number on like, or, or I, I don't have the words to explain how, how valuable um, our doula was. Uh, and I imagine that can be the same for you if that's the route you all choose to go. So I just want to want to put that out in the universe for, uh, for the men out there who are unfamiliar with doulas. Um, I definitely recommend a doula. Um, yeah. And even through this pregnancy, she's given ongoing support. I've been able to reference her this time. Um, anytime I'm going through something, I text her and, you know, she's available and she responds. And maybe we'll tell our doula story one day. Um, but I literally met her, the, like, in, I interviewed her on the phone, met her the night before I went into labor um, told her that I suspected my husband was throwing a baby shower. Do you think I can make it till Saturday? And she was like, beloved, you're not going to make it till Saturday. Mm. Called her the next morning and she was, she was in the house. So while David was driving back from his parents' house, she was in here with me massaging my back. And she was like, okay, so it's, it's time to go. She was in the delivery room. She helped me get changed at the hospital. Um, and then, like I said, she's offered ongoing support. And she she reminded me and still does that the postpartum period is not just six weeks after the baby's born. Now she made it clear. She was like, don't come texting me when the baby's 14 talking about <laughs> is this supposed to happen? Because at that point you're on your own. But she's been like, even with Savi and, you know, Savi's had issues with sleep and and I've had issues up and down with milk and just my own development as a, a renewed mom. Um, a doula is definitely, and she was black and I wanted, I needed another black advocate in the room with me who knew what I wanted. Um, I had a black OB, I had black midwives, but when it came down to giving birth, everybody in the room besides David, myself, my doula, and the soon-to-be baby was white. So um, fortunately for me, I got great care, but I wanted another advocate who could step in and be like, look, you're not going to treat this black mama like this. Um, So I think that's very important um, to just have someone who will support you. And she came over after Savi was born and, you know, she walked me through stretches. She, I think she like, she did the dishes. She like just told me to sit down. So, you know, they're important. They're very important. And I think I remember what post you're talking about. Talk to a man who has wisdom and understanding and, um, can give you true insight onto the value. Like some things, yeah, it'll cost you, but the value of it exceeds money. Amen. So uh, we will end there. This will air tomorrow (laughs) on Wednesday. So that's when you'll see it. And then we'll also have an episode um, following the 4th of July. So I'm going to bring Jay Belk in. Um, we definitely want to uh, say thank you to everybody who subscribed to 80 subscribers on YouTube. Hey. Shout out to all our new subscribers. Definitely want to keep going. So keep sharing with everybody. Um, we hope you all have a safe, uh, a blessed uh, July 4th. If you're traveling, be safe, um, especially if you're going into a place where, you know, COVID has been, been rampant. So have fun. Have a good weekend. We'll see y'all next week. Rush vibes. We out. Way too far to stop me now. Can't stop me now. Now they bring me this far to let me.